Welcome back to Nick Lane's Comic Corner Classic Slash Non Classics. This is episode number 1554 and episode number 1448. I have two trades that collect Rick Remender's run for the series Uncanny Avengers. This is the opening trade of this particular series. This collects the first five issues. Of this series and also the first five issues of Rick Remender's run. Now the artwork in here is done by John Cassidy and Oliver Kapakali. Yes, that is who who does the artwork here for this book. Now I should point out something about the release of these issues. Yes. For some strange reason, I do not know why, but this series, this just for the story arc per se, we had sort of a delay between issues. The first issue was released in October 2012. The second issue, November. Okay, perfectly reasonable. Two, two months in a row. And then for some reason, the issue three doesn't come out until two months later. Yes, two months later, that's when the book gets released. And then we have the issue four come out the following month, February, and five comes out in March. And I think from that point forward, it pretty much was coming on time. Yeah, it pretty much was like this throughout the rest of the run. I thought this was kind of weird. Like, I'm not really sure uh, what was the reason for this. Like, where... There was a delay between issues two and three. Yeah, I'm not really sure what was the reason for this at all. Nope. Now, this story arc is pretty much the debut of the Uncanny Avengers. Now, despite what this cover shows off here, let me. I actually don't need to do that. I can show up the interior cover here because the first issue. This technically is the first issue cover. I'm not going to show the inside because. This is the lineup you think that's going to start up this particular issue. No, not really. As a matter of fact, the team is definitely formed in this issue. It, it does not have a name yet. The only members are simply Havoc, Captain America, and Thor. Now, Havoc is chosen by, by Captain America to lead this team. Purely because they need a mutant to probably, for good PR purposes... And probably because also, the guy's got a leadership experience. The guy like freaking X-Factor. He also led an X-Men team. So, of course, he has experience being an Avenger. Now, this, I thought, was really ingenious. Because Havoc has never been part of the Avengers before. He's been part of X-Factor, the X-Men. I think he was even briefly part of the part of the Immunes. But the Avengers? No, this is a first. Of course, not the only one. We also have Rogue joining the team, though. She is officially joined to issue 4. Wolverine becomes part of the team in issue 3. But here's something by sheer coincidence. At the same this book's coming out, Captain America is also on the main Avengers team. He's also got his own title. And that's it. Now, the story for this is that we have... It opens up really disgustingly, like... The opening page, I did not show it because it's absolutely disgusting. Where we see somebody's head, see somebody's face, and it's being operated on, and we see the brain removed. It's not revealed until the end of the first issue of who this body belongs to. Who does it belong to? The late Charles Xavier. The man who was just killed in the events of Avengers vs. X-Men. By a phoenix possessed cyclops. Who was doing this particular. Remove of the brain surge. This particular moving Charles Xavier's brain. The Red Skull. Though. This is not the actual Red Skull. Nope. This is not the actual one. This is a clone. Yes it was established later. This is in fact a clone. This is not the one that Stan Lee created. Back in the 1940s. That one is officially still dead. It has been dead at this point, as of this very year. It has been that that guy has been dead for eleven years, and they basically kept him dead. So in the first issue, we have it where we have this this guy, where we have put together this team to deal with basically sort of a unity between 
the Avengers and the X-Men. Because the Avengers apparently didn't do much for the mutants at all. So this is a way to basically justify that by having a unified team in a way of Avengers and X-Men. So one of the subplots in here is that we have this mysterious homeless man who puts on a helmet and causes a lot of damage to a few blocks in New York City. Who is this man? Avalanche. You're probably thinking, Avalanche. Who the heck is Avalanche? He's an old X-Men villain. He has, at prior to this, the guy was operating a bar in San Francisco. Now, why is he doing this? Because he's being controlled by the Red Skull. To go freaking nuts on New York City. And here's something I should point out, though. Avalanche dies, falling off one of his makeshift cliffs. And the guy stays dead. For, get this, he stays dead for seven years. Yes, seven years. That was until Jonathan Hickman resurrected him for the uh, for his current X-Men book. Yeah, any all of the unions who died previously, they're all previously they're all resurrected. We also have debut in here of the S-Men. The S-Men, one of the members just happens to be Avalanche's daughter, Water Girl. There's also like a goat face girl. The S Men, they even. Here's something really like, I don't know, kind of disgusting for Red Skull to do. He's even copying Charles Xavier doing like this per se. His little tap finger in the head. So it's like, to me, my S Men. Because the X Men, the X comes from Charles Xavier. And the S Men is for Skull. Yes. So. The S-Men, this might be mutants per se, they are pre pretty much brainwashed by the Red Skull to do his bidding. And he also is trying to control the Scarlet Witch to cross and cause some mayhem. I should point out that these first four issues all take place in a period of one day. Yep. One day. And eventually, of course, the Red Skull is somewhat defeated, but he gets away. Yes. And he stays away for two years. He does not pop up again until toward the end of this particular volume. And they tease something, oh yeah, in five months we're going to get Red Onslaught. That didn't happen for almost 20 issues afterwards. Do not know why, but that's basically what happened. And of course we have basically the team fully formed in issue 4. Now, issue 5 takes place a few days later... Where they add Sunfire, Wonder Man, and the Wasp the team. Now, you could easily say, like, what the heck happened during those for those few days during that three day time skip? Well, you can throw in a couple things in there. You can throw in their guest star appearance, the pages of all new X Men, where they popped up for an issue, you can throw that in there. Plus their appearances in Cable and X Force. Yep, you can throw that in there, and that's it. That's the only thing I can think of you can throw in there that features the Candy Avengers outside of their own comic book. So, we have the public debut, like, officially recognized the team itself is named in issue 5 as the Avengers Unity Squad. And it is called this for pretty much the rest of the series. And then we have, get this, we have the Grim Reaper show up. Yes, the Grim Reaper, who... Like, I think died previously, now he's back again. So, he wants to kill the Avengers by himself. And then he's accidentally killed by Rogue. With one punch. Oh, don't worry, he comes back not long after this. Yeah, and that's the opening issues for this particular run. Yeah, the whole thing, when they revealed the whole thing with the Red Skull holding the brain of Charles Xavier. Because thanks to the powers of... Is the telepathy is in his brain. Ooh boy. Now the S Men of course will return for the prelude to access arc that happened in the last few issues of this run. That was a return and they all got killed by Magneto. Yes, all the S Men got killed by Magneto. Now here's the thing. Hickman never resurrected these people. Nope. He kept them the captain dead. He want nothing to do with these characters at all. As the Red Skull himself, the whole plot through it would not be resolved until Gary Duggan took over the book. 
where you actually resolve that plot thread. Because remember, left without resolving that plot thread. Yep. Over the opening story arc of this book, I'm going to give this a... I'm going to give it a 9 out of 10. Now, initially, when I originally read this about 9 years ago, I was not that barely big of a fan of this book. And then I reread it. I'm like, okay, it's a pretty decent book. But... Then we have the Apocalypse Twins show up. And this is probably, for some people, a big turnoff from the book was the Apocalypse Twins. And now we reach Uncanny Avengers Volume 4, Avenge the Earth. This is, of course, after the planet Earth has been destroyed. So we jump ahead in the future. I'd say about 20 years in the future. Because we see that Cyclops is here and he's got gray in his hair. So I'd say about 10, maybe 20 years in the future. Where we see Havoc on the run from Magneto and his X-Force. Which is comprised of people who are part of the Brotherhood. Like like the Blob, Pyro, I think Wildchar is part of this group. And the people in charge of Planet X are pretty much associated with the X-Men. Cyclops, Storm. I'm trying to think who else was basically. Oh yeah, Cable's here too. And there's also this thing known as the... Tendrum don't dams. Yeah, this event's a temporal interference from interfering in the whole thing of Planet X. Now, one of the Apocalypse twins here, the 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 female twins is here because the her brother was killed by Thor in the previous set of issues, just after the Planet Earth was destroyed by, by the Celestial Executioner. So, then we see Kang and his core. Which is, if you're curious though, who comprised this group? Well, let me see here. Okay, there we go. Okay, the group is comprised of, get this. We have Thor, who had no choice but team with them. We have Doctor Doom from the 2099 universe. We have Spider Girl from Earth X. We have Arno Stark from Iron Man 2020. We have a fascist Betsy Braddock. I'm not kidding about that. Ahab. And a Deathlock Abomination. That is the Kang core. And so Havoc basically has no choice but to team up with Kang in order to protect his daughter and restore Earth. Also Beast is helping him. Because why the heck not? And also we see that prior to this, apparently Cyclops and Havoc were not getting along with each other and eventually reconcile and allow him to go back in time to have himself, Wasp, and, well, not Rogue, because Rogue was killed off prior to this. Basically those two, along with Sunfire and Wolverine, who Sunfire had been torturing for 100 years, well, for a long time, and they go back in time to, to the events of just prior to destruction of Earth. Where it was revealed by Captain America that the plan they basically were going to enact in the previous set of issues would not work. So they have Wonder Man go into Rogue's brain and, well... Oh yeah, by the way, in the show in the present, apparently Scarlet Witch and Wonder Man just finished having sex. I am not kidding about they just finished doing it because they're in bed together and they're both naked under those sheets. I assume that because they're sharing a big bed together in the Avengers Mansion. That's my best estimation. So, and of course, Rogue uses her power to try to stop the Slash Executioner. And then Thor takes his axe, Juckerheim, and he flies up to the Slash Executioner and pokes a hole in the thing's neck. Yes, thus stopping the, ex the, ex the destruction of Earth. And the Sentry, who teamed up with the Avengers, turned against the Apocalypse Twins. By the way, they won't get killed in the story, and they're never seen again. Yes, the Apocalypse Twins. The two kids who happen to be the children of Archangel. Warren, Warren to the third. Who never met these kids. Nope, never did. So, they died... Sentry, of course, decides to shove the Celestial Executioner off into space, 
Oh, yeah, and they tease the fact that they're going to face the wrath of the Celestials. That would not happen for about... Oh, in case you're curious, though, that wouldn't happen for four years we fall up with a plot over with the Celestials because nothing was done with them until Jason Aaron started his run for Avengers in 2018. The Sentry himself would actually disappear after this. He would actually not return until 2017, about three years later, where he appeared re- returned the pages of Doctor Strange, of all things. Yes, he returned in Doctor Strange, where he was apparently resurrected. Yeah, the whole death scene but undone has never been explained. And eventually, guys, on spinoff book, excuse me, well, a brief ongoing series, I got quickly canceled after only five issues. And after that, he did pretty much nothing after that until he showed up in the first issue of King in Black, we got killed by Cole. And that's last you see of Century. Yeah, he did practically jack freaking squat for the past decade. Yep. So, by the way, even though they stopped Apocalypse Wins with Slow Executioner, we also have Kang becoming basically turning heel on the Avengers. Typical him. Oh, and here's something that I loved about the, fu- the finale for this particular set of issues. Yep. The finale. Where, get this. Look at this cover here. If you're curious though, is this a cover homage or anything? The answer is yes. It's a homage to Avengers number 8. The very first appearance of King the Conqueror. And I gotta give high praise to Daniel Kuhn for successfully recreating this cover. Just replacing the characters with, well, various other people. But it's a great cover. So, they bow King in the finale... And they defeat him. And he returns about th- two years later when he pops up in Mark Wade's run for the Avengers. Yep. Yeah. And of course, Katie does not come back in here. They hint at her later on where they potentially could have a comeback. But this plot thread is, to this day, it's never been followed up with at all. It's been seven years since the storyline wrapped up. And, well, not much up with it. By the way, I've got this book roughly a 9 out of 10. It's an excellent story. I love it. And it's a great finale for the Apocalypse Twins story arc. Well, the, the saga for the Apocalypse Twins. That went on since the beginning of this issue. Well, mostly the beginning of issue 5, which is a prelude to this, but officially started with issue 7. Yeah, but it's overall really good story arc. I enjoy it, thanks to my second reread of this particular thing. Yeah, this is just a really good... And, well, that kind of wraps it up for Rick Remender's run for the Avengers. Oh, the Kenny Avengers, excuse me. By the way, I do own volumes 2 and 3. Yep. Yeah. My final thoughts on Rick Remender's run for Kenny Avengers. When the picture came out, I was not the really big fan of it. I still read it. I did like it very much. I did like the relaunch that Rick Remender did just after Access. But my initial problem with the run is was the fact it was abruptly cut off after only releasing five issues. So if you count the five issues along with the 25 that the first line put out, he wrote the first 30 out of 48 issues. Actually, it's more like 60 issues. Yeah, he practically wrote 50% of the series. And there was also an annual, which he did write that too. Mm-hmm. Yes. So, in the case of the Kang Corps, and the, of course, the Infinity Watch, they, for some reason, never returned after this. Nope, they never did. Yes, Kang himself will return, but the Kang Corps? No, they never did. At all. They disappeared? Yeah, the Infinity Watch was made of a Martix. Annihilus, who's a Nova, Yandu, Immortalis, a version of the Phoenix Force, Adam Warlock, Mardell, Surfer Surfer, and Starhawk. The Kronos Corps, like right after 
this particular group well after this particular story wrapped up they never appeared ever again nope and their last appearance was seven years ago yeah and they also did the epilogue where you have Dokken and I think it's, it was the Green Reaper yeah Green Reaper basically where he's alive this about picking up Mikhail from the last issue Now, is it weird, though, despite the fact that the Apocalypse ones, who are mutants, yes, they are mutants, and Hickman never brought to resurrect these people for some reason. I don't know why. By the way, the, the Multiverse Infinity Watch, well, just like in the case of, well, the Chronos Corps, they appeared once after this, and that was basically in a flashback. Uh, basically, their last appearance was issue 22 of this book. And that was it. Yep, that was basically it. Yeah, but that's pretty much it when it comes to Recommender's run. It's it's a pretty interesting run, per se. Lasted from 2012 to 2015. Approximately 30 issues and an annual. I did not think the relaunch was necessary. I mean, they kept Daniel Kuna as the artist, which is a really good artist, by the way. But was the relaunch necessary? No, not really. But the ultimate really problem with this era is the fact that, well, basically by the time Axis wrapped up, Havoc had left the team. Scarlet Witch later started her own solo title, then she rejoined the Canadian Avengers just to wrap up the book. Captain America himself would stay with the group, but he would later leave thanks to the inversion stuff. Well, not exactly vert, but mostly stuff related to the Secret Empire. That's the reason why he left. Thor left because he lost his hammer, and he never rejoined the, the Candy Avengers after this. Nope, the Unity Squad, as soon as this volume wrapped up, he never returned to this book. Nope, never did. In the case of Sabretooth, went to the Candy Avengers, by the came, Candy X-Men, where he was there for a while, of course, I'll explain this before, but... What about Rogue? Rogue would stay with the group until the final issue of the series. Which is interesting, it would probably makes her probably the only character who appeared in like every issue of this whole series. Well, mostly anyways. She did skip a few issues because of the change of the timeline. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. Yeah, so that's it for this clip view. Stay tuned for... Well, actually, for I'll do this probably tomorrow because it's almost midnight right now. So tomorrow I expect to see more comic corners, and I thought I would have time to do a anime review, but there's no time tonight. I just did this one video. We're gonna want to put out one video tonight. Okay, next video. Bye.